Can't share those pictures because it's simply too painful to look at. Honestly, that act is now sparking violence and calls for change that President Bashar al-Assad may not be able to contain. Joining us now to talk about it is Mona el Tawi, a columnist on Arab and Muslim uh, affairs. Hamza, just one word now. That little boy, Hamza, is a name that people are talking about in Syria. Uh, there are Facebook pages uh, dedicated to him. Uh, they're talking about him on social media, on Al Jazeera. Is this little boy Syria's fruit cart vendor? Will he embolden the uprising. Absolutely. You hear from neighborhoods that had never protested before since the Syrian uprising began. You hear his name, Hamza, over and over again. And today, across Syria, has, um, that Friday, which is the usual day for protests now in the Middle East and North Africa, has been called the Friday of Free Children. So there are demonstrations planned across Syria to protest not just his death, but the death of at least seven children who died this week in Syria. Activists say 100 people died at the hands of asset security. Seven of them were children. You know, uh Tunisia was not a particularly oppressive regime. Even Egypt was it, was, it had more to do with the economy than anything else. Syria is a different story. This reminds me of Nadia in Iran. Will the death mean anything in a society that A, is that oppressive, and B, doesn't have press coverage uh, from the outside world. Right. Well, but Tunisia was a, a perfect police state, and Mubarak, because he was a friend of so many in the West, no one paid attention. But I think with Assad, because it is the even more perfect police state, and as you said, there aren't any media representatives inside, we are totally dependent on things like this horrific video right. that showed us the, the, the torture of this poor little boy. I mean, you, you hear the narrator, the, the video was shown in Al Jazeera, so it was shown across the Middle East and Remind Africa. Remind us why this little boy was reportedly tortured. Why? Well, he was disappeared at the end of April, he decided to join protests because his cousin was killed at the hands of security forces during these peaceful demonstrations in Syria. So this 13-year-old boy went out to protest. He disappeared for a month and his body was basically returned to his family, tortured with the penis cut off. I mean, who does that to a 13-year-old boy? So he, he's become this image of, as you said, Ali, this very repressive regime where torture is rampant. Everybody knows that the Assad regime tortures. But who tortures a 13-year-old? And interestingly, too, the Syrian uprising was sparked by, pro by children because a group of children between the ages of 8 and 15 uh, in early March were spraying graffiti on walls in Dara, which has become the mm -hmm. center point yeah. now for the revolution. And they were mimicking the chants of Egypt and Tunisia and others, the people want to topple the regime. The regime arrested children and it enraged their families who went out in peaceful protests. So children in the Syrian revolution have been this theme that we see coming up again and again. Until now, uh, this kind of repression has worked. It has worked because you've seen these leaders keep a control on dissent and keep a control on power. Has something changed? And what if something hasn't changed? And this little boy is gone, and these protests fade away, and this regime keeps stays in power? I think everything has changed. I think everything has changed because we now have these human faces of these brutal repress repressive regimes. But not just that. When you see all those people that Ali mentioned, you know, Iman in, in Libya, uh, Khalid Saeed in Egypt, Mohammed Bouazizi in Tunisia, and now Hamza al Khatib in Syria, these are young people who have grown up with only one leader for mm -hmm. their whole lives. Mm -hmm. They, they have no other leaders, so we're seeing now young people rise up and people rising up with them because they see those leaders are killing the youth of the countries. And when you see that one face shattered, that body yeah. brutalized, you think this could be me. It is and universal. That's, that's beyond politics. Or my it? child or my family. Yeah. And Absolutely. that becomes very, very well, let's, let's hope you're right. Let's hope uh, some good does come of it. Mona, good to see you. Mona Alto uh, Howie is a columnist on Arab and Muslim uh, issues. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me.